My name is Martha Maddox, and for my course project, I chose to present the ellipse. In this video, I will show you six real-life objects where an ellipse can be seen, and I will present to you the various parts of an ellipse, such as the foci, the vertices, the center, and the different types of ellipses in mathematics. In the first ellipse, we have here a football. An ellipse that the football represents is an ellipse with the major axis being the x-axis. And here I have outlined the ellipse in red. The next real life example of an ellipse is a watermelon. The watermelon represents an ellipse with the major axis being the y-axis. And here I have also outlined it in red. Another example of a real life ellipse is being represented by the Earth's orbit around the sun. This example represents an ellipse with the major axis being the x-axis. As well, I have outlined the ellipse in red. Another example of a real-life ellipse is being represented by the Toyota label. Here, I have outlined it in red. Here is a picture of a high school track and field. This represents a real-life ellipse as well. Here is a picture of the Tai Cho Brahe Planetarium in Copenhagen. This represents a real-life ellipse. Now let's look at the different parts of an ellipse. This is the major axis, right along this line here, and this is the minor axis. The line containing the foci is called the major axis. This is foci 2 and this is foci 1. They are contained in the inner corners of the ellipse along the major axis. The midpoint of the line segment joining the foci is called the center. In the center, this is origin, also known as 0, 0. The line through the center and perpendicular to the major axis is called the minor axis. And the two points of intersection are the vertices. There's vertices 1 and vertices 2 on either sides of the ellipse. The length of the major axis is the distance between the two vertices. Here we have two ellipses with the center at the origin. The ellipse on the left has the major axis as the x-axis, and the ellipse on the right has the y-axis being the major axis. On both of these ellipses, A is the distance from the center to one of the vertices, and C is the distance from the center to one of the foci. These two ellipses have very similar but different equations. Now let's look at these two equations side by side. One way you can distinguish between what equation belongs to what ellipse is if you look at the A squared variable. A squared will always be the larger number. In this case, a squared is under the x squared variable, meaning the major axis is along the x axis. And for this equation, the a squared variable is under the y, meaning that the major axis is along the y axis. Here we have two ellipses with the center not being at the origin. The ellipse on the left has the major axis being parallel to the x axis. The ellipse on the right has the major axis being parallel to the y axis. The ellipse on the left, with the major axis being parallel to the x-axis, has foci represented by h plus or minus c comma k, has vertices represented by h plus or minus a comma k, and the center at each k. The ellipse on the right, with the major axis being parallel to the y-axis, has foci represented by h comma k plus or minus c, has vertices represented by h comma k plus or minus a, in the center at h comma k. These two ellipses have very similar but different equations. The way we can distinguish between what equation belongs to which ellipse is by looking at the a squared variable. For this equation, a squared is under the x, which means that it is parallel to the x-axis. For this equation, a squared is under the y variable, meaning that it is parallel to the y-axis. The ellipses I have shown you have one thing in common, and that is this equation, b squared equals c squared minus a squared. This equation is used to determine the exact equation of the ellipse. The a is the distance from one of the vertices to the center, and c is the distance from one of the foci to the center, and b is the distance from the center to one of the co-vertices. You'll see it demonstrated in an example soon. Now I will show you why this equation is used when finding the equation of an ellipse. The reason why we have this equation b squared equals a squared minus c squared is because
there is an existing right triangle in the center of the ellipse. This is how we get the equation b squared equals a squared minus c squared from the existing Pythagorean theorem, c squared equals a squared plus b squared. Now let's look at an example. This is the graph of the ellipse. We are asked to find an equation, okay? So what we are given is one focus in which I have plotted right here in the vertex at negative four comma zero. So we know that the distance from one focus is C and C equals one, two, three. So C equals three. And we also know that from the center to the vertex is A. So here's our vertex that was given and here's the center. So I counted one, two, three, four. And A would equal four. Because of the points that are given, we know that the major axis is the x-axis. So the equation will be x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equals one. We will need to use this equation. b squared equals a squared minus c squared. We know a and we know c, so we plug them both in. Four squared equals 16 and three squared is nine. I did the math and I got seven. B squared equals seven. The equation for this ellipse is x squared over 16 plus y squared over seven equals one. I hope that you've enjoyed this video and I also hope that you've learned a lot about ellipses and how common they are in our world, especially in a football. My name is Martha Maddox, studying at Florida Southwestern State College to become a pharmacist. I hope you have a wonderful day.